All right, Neil, neck pain. Why do cyclists get it? You've got a handlebar there. Has that got something to do with it? It can do. It can do, <laughs> mate. Yeah. Although, strangely, it's, it's one of the least common causes is, is the bar. Wow. But um, yeah, we've got it here as a prop, so we better use it. Yeah. It makes us look more professional. <laughs> We're struggling in that regard. Yes. So there's two main causes of neck pain on a bike. There's structural and then there's muscular ones. We'll go over the muscular ones first. The muscular, the etiology, I guess the causation of, of a lot of neck pain, I would say that this is by far the most common cause of neck pain, is too much weight on your hands. Exactly the same reason why a lot of riders get numb hands. The, the numb hands and the sore neck tend to go hand in hand. <laughs> It's a terrible pun. Yeah. Was, I didn't do that on purpose. They tend to go you hand scripted in hand. that, didn't you? <laughs> That's yeah. very good. Yeah. We've got that written down. Yeah. So they tend to go hand in hand with each other because they're both caused by the same thing, which is too much load on the, on the front end of the rider, right? So when you're bearing a lot of weight on your hands, not only is there pressure going through here, but there's a lot of muscular effort being generated by your trapezius, your rhomboids, your pecs, trying to stabilize the weight that's being tipped forward over the bike. That often coalesces through the cervicothoracic junction here, which is basically the, the base of your neck. The muscles that all kind of insert or originate from that, from that point, when they get fatigued, it can tend to give you this general radiating neck pain, which comes down the side and often sort of sits at the base your neck almost always the cause is too much weight being borne by the hands of the rider and so if the rider is not in good balance they will tend to load their upper body excessively and the cost of doing that is what causes you know the muscular cost of doing that is what causes the pain so people will often come in like oh man i've had this i can't get rid of this neck pain i've tried raising the bars and lowering them and moving them away coming in still get the pain well obviously that you know <laughs> they're looking in the wrong place yeah what you're doing what you've got to do is look to the stability of the rider's pelvis essentially one of the uh, the ideal sort of description of this is that we want the act of pedaling to stabilize the back end of, of the rider, the lower half of the rider, so that their hands can be more or less relaxed on the bars when they're riding with you know, just enough weight on the bars to steer the bike and no more. So most often if you've got neck pain for this reason and you feel very heavy on your hands, you gotta look at the back end of the bike for the causation. Too much weight on the hands, the most common causes, if the seat is too far forward, You'll, you'll we can't leave it onto the front end of the bike. So try moving the seat back. If the seat is too high, you will get very poor hamstring control across the bottom of the stroke, which will then tend to load your hands as well. If like something as far removed as the cleat position can sometimes be implicated in this. If the cleats are too far forward, you get really poor hamstring and control across the bottom of the stroke, the foot's all unstable, and it can tip you forward onto your hands because of quadricep overload. Mm. When your quads are working much, much harder than they should be and the hamstrings are on holidays because the seat's too high or the cleats are too far forward, the rider, because of the origin of their quads on the front of the pelvis, they will pull you onto your hands. Mm. So if you're, if you, you've, you're a rider who's watching this and you think, I, I get neck pain, numb hands, and when I'm doing VO2 max interval efforts, my quads hit a, a massive burn much more rapidly than my hamstrings ever do. There's a good chance there's something which is overloading your quads in the back end of the bike, which is also causing the excessive weight on the hands. So look to the back end of the bike most often for the cause of, of this type of thing. The bar position being grossly wrong can cause it. And, and I won't say that this doesn't happen, but it's by far the least likely thing, strangely, is the position of the bar, unless it's massively off. If it's, if it's 50 mil too low, yeah, you know, you're mm. gonna struggle to get down there. You won't be able to look up the road ahead of you. You'll have to be bracing on your hands. There'll be a lot of weight on your hands. So if it's way, way, way off, it could cause the pain. But most often the solution is in the back end of the bike. So it's, this it's interesting because I thought just generally that looking up maybe being too far down you know having your head up would be the most common cause you got it yeah it's it's it does happen, and that's that was the next the next thing okay. I was going to say is stolen this, your thunder. Sorry. Nah, that's okay. No, <laughs> the structural cause of it is when yeah. your facet joints in the bottom part of your neck, the little joints on the side of the yeah. spine, when they are in full extension and you yes. run out of range. You know, you're looking down the road and you're on the end of your extension range and you can't look up at the sky anymore. Yes, that's going to start hurting pretty rapidly. Yes. So if the bars are way too low, yes, that's okay. what happens. All right. is, is that yeah, the little we call them zygapophyseal joints. I don't know where they got that name from, but 
facet joints is the more common name, the little articulations on the side of the spine, where, where the, the concave curvature of your neck meets the convex curvature of your thoracic spine. The two curves change direction. Where they change direction, the facet joints can easily become opposed to each other. They, they kind of block up and run out of range. Right. And when they're blocked up for very, for, for, well, not very long, five, 10 minutes, they start to hurt. Yeah, so they, they cannot be allowed to be on their end of range. So if you're looking down the road, hands on the hoods and and you've got no neck extension left you know you you're blocked up on the end range of your extension yep it means the bars are too low okay yeah or there's something really wrong with the back end which is altering your posture and messing it up but it means that the bars are too low the pain that you get from that will tend to be more focal it'll be sort of you know along the sides of the spine rather than really spread out okay and there's one way you can sometimes diagnose it but yes if the bars are far too low and everything else is right but the bars are far too low the end of range of, of, of your neck will, will start to give you pain mm. so what you want to have is when you're on the hoods and you're looking down the road you want to have some ability to still extend your neck you know if you can look up at the top of the trees and then look back down at the road you're not on the end of range of your neck extension so right. when i say look up i don't mean just with your eyes yes. if you can look up if you can still extend say 20 or 30 degrees like that yeah. it's that's that's probably enough okay. that's probably enough so first of all look to the general balance of the rider and then look for the the, the bar position being way off where it should be mm. strangely let, so I'll play devil's advocate here. You've got a hyperflexible rider. They, their natural torso angle when they ride is very, very low. The rider goes, oh, I'm getting neck pain. I'll raise the bars. They raise it and raise it, it just gets worse or, or it doesn't get any better. Mm. Right? A, lot, a lot of the time people, people have this overly simplified idea that if I raise the bars, my neck will be more comfortable. Not always the way. Most often what happens in a situation like that, the rider's torso will remain low, and the bars will come up, and they will, instead of riding with a nice relaxed upper body position with the bars too close to them, they'll prop themselves on their arms. So they'll lock their elbows out, load their, their trapezius and their neck musculature, they'll get neck pain because the bars are too high, mm. which sounds, sounds weird, but it's actually surprisingly common. I think once or twice a week, I get a rider who's above averagely flexible, they ride with a relatively long, low torso, and the bars are too high. And with these people, we set up their rear end, and then we end up with running like a minus 17 degree stem just, just to get more drop and then as they as they go down lower their weight comes off their hands and their neck stops hurting right. so it can be counterintuitive it's overly simplistic to think that the higher the bars are the more i raise them the less my neck will hurt it does happen um, but it's certainly not the only cause mm. i would say it's probably a 50 50 mix of when riders come in to see me of the bars being too high or too low it's not often that they're far too low right most people have already by the time they got to me with a sore neck they've already tried raising it and it hasn't solved the problem mm. and sometimes you know they leave there with a crazy 20 degree stem you know just to get their bars low enough and they right. go oh, gee my neck doesn't hurt anymore because there's no weight on my hands right so it it very much if, if you're a hyper flexible rider who likes riding with a long low torso do not be afraid to go low in the front end mm. you know and, and get up over 100 or 120 mils of drop to the bars because that that may be the, the causation behind your neck pain is actually the bars are too high and too right. close to you yeah okay. and so therefore you're propping yourself on them yeah, yeah. so i guess those are the two takeaways the muscular ones versus the structural ones where there's a lack of extension too much weight on the hands is the common cause and the less common cause is, is actually the bars position you know? which is interesting yeah it's um it's it's not as simple as you'd like a lot of things in yeah. bike fitting. It's not as simple as you'd like it to be. It's like, yeah. oh, I'll just raise my bars and my neck pain will go yeah. away. Sometimes the solution is actually the exact opposite to lower the bars or to, you know, to move your cleats further back or to lower the seat a bit to, so that your pelvis is more stable. So, yeah.